Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to this tutorial on advanced concepts of GET and POST requests using the Fetch API in JavaScript. Before we dive into the main content of this tutorial, let's first understand what exactly are GET and POST requests and why they are important in web development. GET and POST are two of the most commonly used HTTP methods in web development. They are used to request data from a server or to send data to a server respectively. GET requests are used to retrieve data from a server while POST requests are used to send data to a server to create or update a resource. Now let's move on to the main content of this tutorial using the fetch API in JavaScript to send and receive data using GET and POST requests. The Fetch API is a modern, easy to use API that allows us to make HTTP requests using JavaScript. It is a powerful tool that makes it easy to send and receive data from a server. Let's start by looking at an example of how to use the Fetch API to send a GET request to a server. So for this example, I will be using the JSON placeholder fake APIs for testing our Fetch commands. So for a GET request, we just have to type fetch and then we have to provide the URL. So I'm going to provide the URL for the JSON placeholder to do's endpoint. And that's all we need to do for executing the fetch command to fetch the to do's. But this command when executed is going to return a promise because it is a network request. It is going to be a while while the response returns. So when the promise will be resolved, then we will get the response. So to handle the promise, which is going to be returned, we are going to chain a then function. And when the promise will be returned, if it is successful, then the callback, which is provided as an argument of this then function is going to be called. So in the first promise, we are going to get the response. Next, we will call response.json, which is again going to return a promise. When the promise will be resolved, then we will get the JSON for the to do's and we can use that JSON in the way we want to use it. So right now I have just logged that JSON into the browser console. We can also do any kind of error handling by chaining a catch function. So if the promise fails to resolve, if there is an error, then this error callback function is going to be called. This is the simplest way in which we can use the fetch API for a get request. Let's now check in the browser what is the response that we are getting from the server. As you can see over here in the console, nearly 200 to do items are returned and these are the list of to do items. Now let's look at an example of how to use the fetch API to send a post request to a server. So I'm going to keep this command as usual but we are going to make a few changes the first thing that we will do is we will create a data object and inside it i'm just going to create a property with the value title because we are going to post a new to do item so for the to do item the title is going to be my to do and now for the fetch command arguments we have to provide an options object in this object, we have to add a bunch of properties. The first one is the method. The method is post. Then we have to provide the body. So for the body, we have to provide this data for this post request, but we have to convert it into a JSON string that can be done by simply calling json.stringify and then providing this data as an argument. Then we have to provide the headers. So for headers, this is going to be another object and we are just going to provide the content type and the value will be application json and that is pretty much everything for posting a new to do to the server let's now see if this request is successful or not as you can see over here a new to do has been logged to the console because we are logging to the console the JSON data which is being returned. But what is exactly in the response? To find that out, we can check the network tab. Let me just refresh this page again. If you will see over here, there is the request URL. There is this request method. 
the status code is 201 which means it is a successful response go to the response tab and this is our response title to do id 201 so basically this is a fake api so nothing is going to be added on the server but this server is just letting us know that this is a correct request so it is returning us just the payload that we sent and this is our payload my to do with a new id which is 201 so these were the simple examples now let's take a look at a couple of more advanced examples of using the fetch api to send and receive data using get and post requests so the first example is how we can use the url search parameters so for that we can use an inbuilt constructor which is url search params let me just type it for you url search params so what we have to do is we have to create a new object let's just call it params equals to new because this is a constructor we have to use the new keyword and then we have to pass in an object as an argument this object is going to contain the properties for all the search params so for to do we only need one so i'm going to provide it which is id let's use the value 10 now for the url i'm going to convert it into a template string and then let's provide the params after this so let's do that and because this is a get request we don't need this options object and that's pretty much everything we need to do to use the url search params constructor for using the query parameters so if you're wondering what query parameters are query parameters are used to send additional data to the server along with the request and they are appended to the end of the url as key value pairs so let's now see in the browser so this is the request which was sent if you will see in the request url the id is over here after this question mark and um, the response you can see that we are getting the to do with the id value of 10 in the response now let's look at an example of how to send a post request with form data so form data is a way to send data to a server that is formatted in a way that is similar to a html form so for that we first need to create a new form data object so let's just do that const form data equals to we have to use the form data constructor so form data and then to add properties to this form data we have to use the form data dot append function so i am going to append three properties for a new to do so user id let's add the id as 25 and then two more so this is for the title and i'm just going to call it my to do and then this is for the to do body my to do body and now over here we don't need these params we just need this to do's url and then we have to provide an options object because this is a post request so we have to provide the property for method which is post and then we have to provide the body for body we can just directly pass in the form data object and that's everything that we have to do so now let's check in the browser what response we are getting so this was the request this is a post request and the payload is the form data with user id title and body the response is the id of the newly created to do and in the console you will see that this id is logged to the console as well so the server is just returning us the id of the newly created to do and that's it guys these are just a few examples of how to use the fetch api to send and receive data using the get and post requests in javascript i hope you have found this tutorial helpful and that you now have a better understanding of how to use the fetch api thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more tutorials like this i will see you in the next one